Hi there and welcome to this week's video and today we're going to deal with chromatic aberration and we'll start with what is chromatic aberration. If you have an area of high contrast so we've got uh, so a building against a skyline which is what we're going to work with today it's quite possible and not at all unusual in fact to see a slight what we call a color fringing where it's just like a, a, a sort of a sometimes green sometimes blue sometimes purple for reasons that we come apparent shortly, uh, edge, what we call a fringe. And chromatic aberration is a direct result of your schoolboy physics, or possibly schoolgirl physics. When we put light through a lens, which of course is what we do as photographers, what we find is that the light that we see as white gets bent, and it gets bent a different amount depending on what colour it is, it's due to wavelengths. On the screen now we have a video, we don't have a video, on the screen now we have a picture that shows you very simply how this looks. Over here we bring white light in through our lens and that goes through the lens and gets bent. Now of course we want it to get bent because we want it to land up on our sensor in the middle here. If it didn't, well we wouldn't have an image would we? Or to be out of focus. And that's exactly what chromatic aberration is. It's the different lengths, the different colours of light not all being in focus at the same time. And as you can see here, green sits quite nicely in the middle if you go back to your old red, orange, yellow, green, blue uh, thing of rainbows. Uh, green sits very near the centre and of course we use red, green, blue sensors for photography. That's how we make up the colours that we see. So the green effectively kind of sits in the middle of all of this. The red, however, gets bent at a slightly different ratio and that then falls further behind the sensor, which effectively means the red is out of focus. And the blue, uh, well that gets bent a different way entirely and ends up in front of the sensor. So we now have an image that is comprised of three bands in this case, the red, green, blue of our sensors, all landing up effectively in different places. Now of course every lens will do this to some degree or another and manufacturers will use multiple lenses and different coatings and all sorts of fancy mathematics to try and fix this. But the plain fact is you can't totally get rid of it. The images we're going to show you next were shot from my drone which has an effective focal length of 24mm and it was shot at an aperture of 5.6. Now they're both important figures because the wider your lens the more chance you have of this aberration appearing and the wider your aperture, in which case this is a 5.6, the more chance you have of this appearing. So you can reduce chromatic aberration at time of shooting by using a longer focal length, if that's possible, and or using a smaller aperture, if that's possible. And bear in mind, of course, we are forever doing the dance of light versus time versus ISO sensitivity settings. That means occasionally you will be stuck with what you've got because that's the only way you can get the image. I'm going to open up the same image a couple of times and this was one that I took from my drone up at a place called Magpie Mine. It's a lovely place, I have permission to fly there. And I'm going to open it up using uh, Bridges version camera raw. I've already selected auto for the, the processing uh, of the colours and such like. I'm happy with that for what we're going to do today. Uh, I know that the sensor on the settings I had is a little noisy so I'm going to choose to go into detail and I've pre-selected a value here for the noise reduction and the sharpening value. So that's just something I do when I'm working with this particular type of image from the drone. So we can close that one down a little. And we're going to go into optics now in optics we've got the opportunity to do many different things and I'm actually going to unselect chromatic aberration and unselect profile corrections. We're going to open this effectively the only thing we're going to do with it is reduce the noise. Okay. Now I appreciate you can reduce noise afterwards, I've, I've got some very good noise reduction software but for the purposes of today that's what we're going to be doing. So there's the first image. Okay. So that's the one we haven't done anything with. Now we're going to go back into Bridge and open up the image a second time, just to confuse the poor thing. And this time when we do that, we're going to choose exactly the same detail, the noise settings as we had before, but we're going to use Bridge's ability 
to bring in Raw's fixing tools if you like and we're going to tick chromatics and tick profile corrections and open. So the only difference between the two images that are about to appear on site or on the screen rather is the one on the left has not had chromatic aberration and lens profile corrections applied and the one on the right has. So I finished with our little diagram here of CA. I will close that down to make the screen a little tidier. So the image on the left here we have taken without any fixes and on screen at this kind of size it looks pretty okay. It would make a decent 8x10 print without too much hassle. If we go and look at it a little closer and I'm going to use Control 1 uh, on a Mac that's Command 1 to do 100% zoom and I'm going to move up to the corners here and over here we can start to see very faintly at the moment I appreciate all is not well so if I zoom in a little more and I'm going to go up to this top corner here you'll notice that we've got this bluey tingy effect highly scientific this bluey tingy effect around the edges here and that particularly shows up when we have high contrast areas so we've got the, the building here against a, a blue sky and you can see it really doesn't look terribly good and I appreciate that I'm quite high magnification here but we'll do exactly the same to the other image to see how it goes so this has not been corrected the image here we have so we'll start going to control command one whichever is your choice and we'll go and look at the same area of the image as close as I can achieve and we'll move across and if I zoom into that a little more so we are there at 200% and there at 300% noticeably different very noticeably different so if I move across here and um, we can see the real difference so this has been through chromatic aberration fix and this hasn't and it's pretty obvious to me uh, and hopefully to you as well that we've got this horrible nasty tinge down here and if we go to the one that software has had a go at fixing for us if so we get that a little bit more accurate for you uh, basically we haven't got it there it's literally a half second fix when you open your image you just need to tick the box that says chromatic aberration you just need to tick the box that says lens profile and it's problem solved it won't fix everything perfectly it's still got a little bit to play at it's a piece of software it's not a miracle worker and at the end of it all you can do your bit to reduce the chromatic aberration by choosing your settings a little carefully so you can see here we've got a little bit of a kind of color cast up here on the corrected one we haven't it's dead easy to fix it takes fractions of a second please please take the time to do this there's nothing worse than having an absolutely brilliantly gorgeous image that then gets rejected from sites because it's got that horrible color cast to it look at your images at 100% look at them at 200% because if we take an image and we blow it up to being a 20 by 30 canvas or a 20 by 30 print this is going to look awful so take your time get it right take a few seconds be proud of your work so that's the end of today's little tutorial chromatic aberration and as ever please remember if you like the image it's a fabulous image if somebody else likes it that's even better and if somebody wants to part with a herd a hard earned to buy it that is awesome take care stay safe we'll see you for the next video